Now, I'm going to give some examples of convex functions. This is example 134 in the textbook. The following functions. convex so the first function is f of x equal to ax the inner product of a and x plus b here um, a is an element of um, Rn B is a real number and uh, this function is defined on Rn okay um, we can easily show that f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is equal to lambda times f of x plus 1 minus lambda times f of y um, for all x and y in Rn and uh, lambda in R. So um, we, we, we already proved earlier that f here is an r phi function so this property is satisfied for all x and y in r and, and lambda in r so in particular um, we have that f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is less than or equal to lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of y for all lambda in the interval 0 1 okay therefore um, any R5 function is convex. Okay. Now, um, the second example is f of x is equal to uh, the norm of x where x belongs to Rn. Um, let me go ahead and show that this function is convex on Rn. So um, we fix any x and y in Rn and lambda in the open interval 0, 1. Then f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is equal to the norm of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y. By the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to norm of lambda x plus norm of 1 minus lambda y. Okay. Uh, because lambda is greater than zero, norm of lambda x is equal to lambda times norm of x. And uh, similarly, um, because 1 minus lambda is also positive, norm of lam 1 minus lambda times y is equal to 1 minus lambda times norm of y. So this is equal to lambda times f of x plus 1 minus lambda times f of y, okay? So uh, we have proved that f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is less than or equal to lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of y for all x and y in Rn and lambda in the um, interval 0, 1. Therefore, f is a convex function. Um, the third example is f of x 
um, equals to x squared, where x is in R. Okay, so this is just the squaring function. Um, we can easily show that the squaring function is convex. Um, now I'm going to talk about some more important properties of convex functions. So uh, this is theorem 1.36 in the textbook. A function f from Rn to the extended real line is convex if and only if f of the sum of lambda i xi where i runs from 1 to m is less than or equal to the sum of lambda i f of xi where i runs from 1 to m where lambda i is greater than or equal to 0 and uh, the sum of lambda i where i runs from 1 to m is equal to 1 here xi belongs to uh, rn and uh, m is any uh, positive integer okay the proof of this theorem um, is uh, based on induction we can also use the Nash theorem in order um, to prove this theorem. Uh, in the Nash theorem, we're going to study the relation between um, the convexity of um, an extended real valued function and um, the convexity of its epigraph. This is theorem 1.37 in the textbook. A function f from Rn to the extended real line is convex if and only if if and only if is a big graph is a convex subset of Rn plus 1 Now, I'm going to go through the proof of this theorem Note that in, in this theorem, we consider the um, function f defined on the whole space Rn instead of on um, a convex subset of omega. And uh, in, in, in what follows, without lots of generality, we will only consider um, functions defined on the whole space Rn. So, um, first I'm going to show that if f is a convex function, then the epigraph of f is a convex subset of Rn plus 1. So, in this direction, we suppose that Um, f is convex and we will show that the epigraph of f
is a convex set. In order to do so, we're gonna use the definition of convexity of sets. So, fix any elements um, x1, t1, and x2, t2 in the epigraph of f and fix any number lambda in the open interval 0, 1. Then, by the definition of the epigraph of f, we have the following. f of x1 is less than or equal to t1 and f of x2 is less than or equal to t2. Okay. Now, since f is a convex function, is a convex function, we have the following f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is less than or equal to lambda f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda f of x2. Now, because f of x1 is less than or equal to t1 and uh, f of x2 is less than or equal to t2, um, we have that lambda f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda f of x2 is less than or equal to lambda times t1 plus 1 minus lambda times t2. Now, we apply the definition of uh, the epigraph of f to have the following property. Then, lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 and here lambda t1 plus 1 minus lambda t2 belongs to the epigraph of f. Okay? Again, because f of this element is less than or equal to this number, the order pair lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 lambda t1 plus 1 minus lambda t2 belongs to the epigraph of f. So, um, this order pair can be written as follows lambda x1 t1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 t2 okay and uh, this element belongs to the epigraph of f so we have proved that if x1 t1 and x2 t2 are in the epigraph of the function f and uh, lambda is in the open interval 0 1 we have that lambda x1 t1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 t2 belongs to the epigraph of the function f therefore the epigraph of f is convex now i'm going to show the converse of this theorem um, that means if we assume that the epigraph of f is a convex subset of rn plus 1 then f is a convex function so suppose that the 
the the AP graph of f is convex. We will show that f is a convex function. So, um, using the um, remark given earlier, we only need to prove the following f of lambda x plus 1 minus, uh, actually f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is less than or equal to lambda f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda f of x2 for all x1 and x2 in the domain of the function f and lambda is in the open interval 0, 1. Okay, so again, we only need to prove this inequality for x1 and x2 in the domain of the function. Okay, and the proof is also based on another observation. So, if we take any element x in the domain of the function f, then the order pair x f of x always belongs to the AP graph of the function f. Note that in this situation, f of x is always a real number, okay? So let me use these uh, properties in order to continue the proof of the theorem. So we fix any x1 and x2 in the domain of the function and we fix any number lambda greater than 0 and less than 1. Then, as mentioned earlier, x1, fx1, belongs to the AP graph of f. And similarly, x2, f of x2, belongs to the epigraph of f. Now, we're going to use the assumption that epigraph of f is convex to have the following. Since the epigraph of f is convex, lambda times x1 f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 f of x2 belongs to the AP graph of f. So this follows from the definition of convexity of sets. Equivalently, Lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 and lambda f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda f of x2 belongs to the AP graph of f. Recall that the AP graph of F contains all elements of the form x lambda where f of x is less than or equal to lambda. 
Okay. So here we have that lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 lambda f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda f of x2 belongs to the AP graph of f. Therefore, f of this element is less than or equal to this number lambda. So we have that f of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 is less than or equal to lambda f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda f of x2. So f is convex. So we have uh, um, proved the theorem.